My name is Karani. I'm from Nairobi, Kenya. I'm the GBS liaison officer in Kenya and I'm supporting patients also from Tanzania and Uganda. I went down with Guy and Barry in the year 2003. I'm uh, an insurance salesperson and at that time I was selling insurance for a multinational company in Kenya. Remember that morning I was sharing a meeting and I felt some uh, pain on my left uh, calf muscle, sort of like a cramp. And uh, I remember mentioning to my colleagues that uh, I'm a bit fatigued and feeling pain on my left leg. And one of them suggested that uh, perhaps Karan it's time you need massage. Uh, by the end of the day, in the evening, I was feeling pretty tired and I decided to go home early and relax. Uh, the following morning, I was still very tired. I decided to go to hospital and get checked up. I went to Aga Khan Hospital in Nairobi and I saw the doctor, the, G the GP, and they ran a f uh, several tests and they told me there's nothing wrong with me. It's perhaps stress. They told me to go home and relax. Uh, I insisted that my body was not okay. And eventually I was given some tablets to go and take at home. And on Sunday the following day, I was still feeling a lot of fatigue. I mean, a bit fatigued, a lot of fatigue. And I decided to call a doctor friend of mine who came to check out on me. And the doctor told me, Karan, all you need to do is continue taking your medication. The following day, I was unable to wake up. And some little strength on my right hand. And I was able to pick my phone and call the doctor who had come to see me the previous day, who called my relatives because they were just living close uh, to my house. And they came, broke the door, and got me from the house and took me to a kind of hospital. The same hospital I had gone on that Saturday. And it was admitted immediately. Uh, what, uh, what scared me when I got admitted was the number of doctors who were coming to listen to my story. The doctors continued learning tests for the, following, for the next two weeks, but none of the tests was showing what I was suffering from. I remember at one time, one doctor came with x-ray on my back and showed me the x-ray told me, Karani, your problem is this, this nerve is being pressed by this bone and we need to operate. So we relieve the pressure and you'll walk within two weeks. I was very happy. The following morning before I could go to the theater at about 6 a.m., another doctor came, a professor this time, with the same X-ray produced the x-ray and told me, Karan, look, your back is perfect. Don't agree to go to the theatre. So, of course, there was the difference now between the two doctors' opinion. They decided to send me for MRI x-rays. And I went in some MRI x-rays, came back with them. They checked them out. They said, Karan, your back is perfect. I was happy and sad at the same time happy that they never carried out a necessary surgery. Sad, they were yet to identify what had affected me. Two days thereafter, I had problems in breathing and I had to be taken to the ICU where I was ventilated for close to one month. It's during the ICU when they did the spinal tap and discovered that the protein levels were elevated and diagnosed me with GPS. All this time, I could not move. I could not lift my hand. I could not scratch myself. I could not turn in bed. I had to be fed. I had to be washed. I was completely immobile. When I stabilized, I was transferred from the ICU to the ward and later to a different hospital where I was in hospital for close to one year. All this time, 
uh, the physiotherapist would come do exercise, do exercise, and for about eight months, there was no single movement on my body. It's far much later, almost the ninth month, when there was a freak of movement on my palm. I used to have a medical cover which was exhausted during my stay in hospital. I used my finances to clear my medical bills. I borrowed money to assist in clearing the medical bills. I was actually discharged not because I recovered, but because I could not continue paying for the medical services. I had to hire a wheelchair, I had to hire a bed because I could not be able to sit up. And he was in the house for the next seven years before I could sit on a wheelchair. As a salesperson, one of the tools we use in selling is the capacity to speak and talk. I was able to talk, get somebody to hold the phone on my ear, and I was able to sell in bed, sell insurance, and create enough resources to sustain me. When I was able to sit on a wheelchair, I was able to buy a small vehicle, modify it, and I went back to my employer to demonstrate that I could sell. Went back to my former employer through my manager and made an appeal for my account to be reopened so that I can sell and sustain myself and my family. To my utter disappointment, the company rejected me. And they said, there's no way we are going to allow somebody to sell insurance on a wheelchair. I was totally disappointed, totally crushed. But I did not give up. I put my papers together and got a friend of mine to take it to another insurance company, a competitor, to open an account for me. Don't forget, this insurance company, the guys who rejected me, I used to be a top sales agent in that organization. I started giving them business. Uh, within two months, I had been called by one of the managers. They were happy with how my account was performing and they invited me to come to go and see them in their offices. Still, I was scared, so I created excuses. I never went there. Second month, they called me. By the end of the sixth month, I was one of the best agent, sales agents. And this time they told me, we have to either to come to your office or you have to come to our office. So I decided to go to their office. They came to my car, the manager. He was very happy. I told him I cannot be able to walk. I use a wheelchair, but I'm keen on doing business with them. And they gave me all the support I required. As we speak, I'm among the top sales people in that company for the last five years. The biggest challenge I have with the, with the, with the GBS at the moment is fatigue. Uh, and get fatigued very easily. Uh, in my country, Kenya, uh, people who are on wheelchairs are still getting discriminated. Just like I've uh, said uh, when I was trying to go back to my office, I mean to my former job. Those, those are some of the challenges uh, I face on a daily basis. So what I find also very challenging is uh, uh, the way uh, people who have one form of disability are profiled. You are put in a profile that you are supposed to be like this. People who are disabled are supposed to be dirty, they're supposed to be poor, they're supposed to be begging. So once you, are, you don't fit into that description, you end up even attracting resentment from some quarters. Uh, when uh, I was told that uh, I was suffering from GBS, uh, the first question I asked the doctors is, am I going to walk again? None of the doctors or the nurses had an answer to that. They were telling me you'll recover. You are going to recover. 
then ask them, do you have a patient, somebody who has recovered? They did not have any person. They could not show me anybody who had recovered. So what I did is I talked to my cousin and I asked them to go to the internet and they search for what is GBS. So they found a lot of data on GBS from the GBS CIDP Foundation. And I asked them to print this information and they printed and they brought me the materials. So I would have a nurse or a friend who has come to visit me in hospital hold the booklet over my face and I would read, and I would read. And I was able to get information about the foundation. I was able to understand what is GBS. I was able to get to know my prognosis. I was able to understand about the other variants of GBS like CIDP. And when I recovered sufficiently to be able to use a computer, I got in touch with the foundation. And I became the liaison officer in Kenya. The best thing about the foundation is about the information they give us, the information which strengthens you, that you know you are not alone, that you can be able to bank on the foundation for information, because information is power when it comes to a serious condition like GBS or CIDP. I was able to read stories of other people who have undergone similar experiences and who survive to tell their story and to encourage others. And this is precisely what I'm doing in Kenya, supporting people with GBS, telling them here, come, look at me. I'm alive, I'm strong. It has not affected my mental capacities. I can still work and provide for my family. You are not your legs. GBS does not affect your mental capacity. So don't sit there and tell me you can't do nothing. Yes, you can, and it's possible to recover and learn your life again. As we speak, my life is far much better than when I used to walk.